Let's talk some recruiting, uh, Jeremy. Um, Amarian Miller decommitted from LSU over the weekend. Uh, the North Caddo product, about a 6'2 uh, wide receiver, who says he's very much interested in LSU, but at this point uh, in time, he is is going to open up his recruitment. You, know, you look at Brian Kelly and coming in, and you know, there's no question whether or not Ed Ogeron was going to be a fit on the recruiting trail down here mm-hmm. in Louisiana. That was no, certainly not an issue. With Brian Kelly, you, know, you certainly raised some questions. The guy who's not spent much time down here, uh, has been a national recruiter at Notre Dame, is from the Northeast of Boston, coached in the Midwest for two decades, What's it going to look like when he comes down here? And right now, you know, LSU's certainly done a good job of going nationally and, and identifying some guys and getting some commitments in their class. But as far as Louisiana goes, to this point, LSU only has one commit from the state, and it's the 14th-ranked player in the state in Trey Holly. So you start to look. Arch Manning is the number one player in the state. He's not coming to LSU. I'm not really worried about that at all. <laughs> uh, but then you start to look at some of the guys that LSU very much is in the mix on and wants to bring to, to Baton Rouge. Well, in some cases, stay in Baton Rouge. Shelton Sampson, one of those five-star wide receiver from Catholic. Jaden Osbury from U High is the number three player in the state. Derek Williams from Westgate is a big-time safety prospect. Eli Holstein is committed to Alabama on, on the quarterback front. you got Tackett Curtis, who's a four-star linebacker from Manny. you got Amari and Miller, who we just mentioned. Jordan Matthews from Woodlawn. Here is a highly sought-after cornerback. Kylan Jackson from Zachary is a four-star safety. I mean, you have got... Um, you've got a five-star, and then you've got 17 four-star players in this state, and LSU has a commitment from one of them. Um, does that concern you at this point in the calendar? No, it's too early on. I, I think obviously guys have to take their official visit. Obviously, Coach Kelly, um, I'm pretty sure he wasn't recruiting most of these guys at Notre Dame, so uh, he has to develop a relationship with all these players, and obviously the, the recruiting staff's got to do a, a good job of that, and obviously there's going to be junior days, and obviously – visits and games in the fall and all those things so it's so much time away from now and obviously the next signing day and then obviously national signing day i'm not going to get too warped up on the on the recruiting class right now as we sit here uh, about to be in june so um it's a lot of work to do um i I trust coach kelly in this recruiting process i think for me the biggest thing i can point to um getting all the guys from the state of louisiana in the transfer portal that have ties to this state and family here um getting those guys to come to lsu i'm pretty sure he can use some of those same things um, he used to recruit guys coming out of high school, so I'm not going to get too wrapped up on the on the recruiting class right now. Radio is better inherently uh, when there is a a large disagreement. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's none here between me and you. Yeah. I just yeah. in this era, mm-hmm. it's just a different world. And there was a time where if you were you know into the summer of that class and you had only had five commits and you didn't have anybody from Louisiana other than one player committed, you had a serious problem. That's not the case anymore because these recruiting battles flip-flop so much so late based on what's going on with NIL and the transfer portal and all this kind of stuff, plus the fact that you're going to stock your shelves with a bunch of transfers as opposed to just 25 guys or now you know that, that, that number's been lifted, players from the high school ranks. So it's just not a time to get you know, to go crazy. LSU right now has got Mac Markway, the, the tight end from DeSmet, um, up there in St. Louis. They've got Ryan Yates. From Denton, Texas, who's a four-star safety, Dalen Allen, Dalen Austin is a four-star corner from Long Beach. Trey Holly is the running back from Union Parish here in Louisiana, and then Michael Darty, the safety from over there in Georgia, who's a four-star player as well. You got this camp season. Uh, you're going to have some evaluations. You're going to extend some offers. You're going to get some guys on campus as you move throughout the summer. Now keep in mind, these guys had a lot of their high school career where they weren't allowed to visit any campuses. Mm-hmm. So now you're trying to pack all this stuff in in the last couple of months. Now that's commonplace for some people who were lesser known or, or lesser recruited players. For somebody like you that was on the radar as a freshman and sophomore, and really all the guys that came in your class, Odell and Jarvis and Lael and Freak Johnson, all these guys were everybody knew they were when they were sophomores. Like you start to go on visits and, and explore a lot of things. They weren't allowed to do that for a lot of their high school careers. So I think it's a late start for everybody. Plus, with all the rules changing, you want to sit back. Why why would I commit to a school? If I can create an NIL bidding war, mm-hmm. like why would I limit myself? That's yeah. one of the things Saban is 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 mad about in uh in, in spring meetings. He's like, what's to stop somebody who's a hundred percent committed to staying at a school? They're they're happy there, their family's there, their girlfriend's there, you know, they've got a starting job, all this kind of stuff can be great. But why wouldn't you put yourself in the transfer portal and say, Hey, you know, y'all come see what you can do just to make the boosters at said school? Crank up the NIL money. Like, yeah. 
you create leverage and you lose it all if you say, oh, yeah, man, don't worry about me, which yeah. a lot of people listen and say, well, that's the honorable <laughs> thing to do. Well, fine, yeah. but it doesn't change the fact that you can create a little bit of leverage, which a lot of people have done in the world of business. Yeah, no, they definitely have. And I think that's the biggest like uh, crazy thing for me with this whole NIL. The whole thing was basically started for you not to use NIL in recruiting. But that's exactly what everyone in this country is doing. And there's the, it's the only way to stay afloat. If you want some of these four and five star guys, um, NIL is going to be being used. So it's just, it's funny to me. It's kind of laughable that, that the NCAA has kind of let this thing gone on the way it has because obviously we, we know Saban doesn't say anything for no reason. He's calling out Jimbo. He's doing all these things for a reason because it, that's exactly what's going on. And we know that's technically the only rule that you're not supposed to be following. So for these kids and obviously some of these kids who are already on campus, um, they're going to do that. They're going to see, you know, where they can get, you know, obviously the most capital from some of these programs. And, and there's no rush to be committed to a school. Obviously, if you are going to commit early on, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of NIL promised or locked in uh, at a very early point on. So that's kind of what this thing's turned into. Is it good or bad for college football? I think that's going to be determined as we go. But um, that's just kind of what we have to deal with now. It's going to be NIL bidding wars for every single one of these players. Here comes my broken record take. I've said it a million times on the air, and I'll continue to say it. Um, there was a time in my life where I was just locked in on the recruiting thing, day to day, all that kind of stuff, looking at the stars, where's the class ranking, all that kind of stuff. And and that day has passed for me. I don't do not do that anymore day to day. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that do, and that's why they keep a lot of those sites in business and up and moving, and there there is a market for that. But I, I've, I've gotten out of that. Now, that being said, I still very, very much understand how vital recruiting is because if you don't get players, you got no chance. Mm -hmm. You look outside the top 12 signing classes every year, you can eliminate the rest from winning a national championship. It's just the way it goes. Um, you have to get the players. So I understand how important it is. I just want to see it when the ink's dry. Mm -hmm. Show me when the ink's dry, and then we'll get into it. I, I th and, and then it, it even takes a hit, another hit, when I say, you know, not to mention the fact that now you're only going to be signing some guys and then you really got to see what the transfer portal yields for me to really evaluate everything. So <laughs> yeah. there's another step that's being added. And so I just, I can't get all hot and bothered over what's going on on May 31st. I think you've got to continue to recruit. I think people that think, well, he's obviously just not putting a focus on the state of Louisiana. He wants to he, he said multiple times when he got here, I'm so excited to get in the car to recruit instead of the private plane and take a three-hour flight across the country. He's putting plenty of eggs in the Louisiana basket. Frank Wilson is putting plenty of eggs in the, in the, uh, in the in Louisiana basket. Brad Davis is putting plenty of eggs in the Louisiana basket. He's got Louisiana roots on this staff. He's going to hit this state really, really hard. Just right now, when you look at the internet, it hasn't been – wasn't quite like it generally is. Yeah, and I, and I think for me, especially now, and I think, you know, for me, I, I kind of have to agree with you with the whole recruiting trial and following it so intensely. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest, you know, trump card and all of this stuff is, you know, guys can commit to whoever the heck they want to commit to on National Signing Day, but when things don't go well six months into it or seven months into <laughs> it, guys are out of the door. Eject so. button. Bang. <laughs> yeah, so it's like you can value these signing classes, these recruiting classes, but they're so ever-evolving now with the transfer portal. And especially guys from this state, I, I think obviously they go outside the state and go elsewhere and things don't go work out. Um, a lot of these guys are going to be knocking on the door to come back home. So I'm not going to get too wrapped up with it. To me, you got to look at it as it goes on throughout the whole season and see what guys you can actually keep on your roster and what guys are actually going to stick around because, I mean, guys are getting out of the door faster than we've ever seen. So you really can't put too, too much in some of these recruiting classes when they first locked in. Are we going to lead the show with the first two five-star transfers out of A&M? Is that going to be the <laughs> yes. lead that day? Oh, 100%. I mean, it, I mean, I can't see. I mean, unless they're going to be bringing out some Brink trucks. But, I mean, if you're going to be leaving A&M, probably going to be leaving because you're not getting playing time. And, obviously, you probably make a nice tuck and change while you're there already. So got to take lot. a pay cut to get somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to be excited to talk about that because it's definitely on the horizon. All right, that's a little bit of uh, on recruiting. Amarian Miller decommits from LSU, still very much in the mix as a Louisiana kid, but going to explore some options, and I think we all know kind of what that means. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.